Hi, like Christophe said last year in uh, 2013, I participated with 17 other students in the World Solar Challenge. Actually, what do you need to conquer this challenge? Well, it's quite easy. You only need a solar car that's performant. I think most of you know how a solar car looks like. And this is the Indipol one, the car that we raced with in the World Solar Challenge. I'm actually not going to talk about what the car is and, and, and how it works. I'm going to talk about the challenge itself. So actually, the World Solar Challenge um, has a lot of paradoxes. The first one is, what is the, the, actually the meaning or what do we need to do with this solar car? It's driving 3,000 kilometers through the Australian outback. So we have to drive on this uh, very straight road. There is actually only one corner in the road. Um, and we have to do this as fast as possible. The car is very efficient. So that's actually the main aspect and importance of a solar car is being efficient. You should know that at an average speed of 85 kilometers an hour, the car only consumes 1,000 watts, what's approximately the same as a small hair dryer. And um, actually, the other thing we need to do is, before the race, it's a qualification lap. Like you can see, it's not one corner, but 14 hairpin um, yeah, corners. So it's actually very different of the race itself. You should know that it's quite hard for a solar car to do this. Um, the forces are much higher, and actually not every team succeeds in this first challenge. We finished sixth and 42 teams started at the race. Actually, the biggest challenge started at that moment because we had to drive 3,000 kilometers through the harsh environment of the Australian outback. What does this mean? Well, it's 60 degrees, there's a lot of dust, and you can't imagine how many flies. <laughs> it's actually the, the, the worst problem of, of the desert. And um, yeah, it actually um, is very physical. On the other hand, the mental state of the team determines if it will be successful or, in worst case, fail to succeed in the, in, in the, in the race. Another thing is that the, yeah, we are in the desert and um, it's a long way from home. This is actually a picture from um, our workshop in Belgium. And in Belgium, yeah, we had all the tools and all the necessary equipment, but we are trying our best in the desert and then we get um, this type of, of workspace. Like you can see, it's, uh, yeah, we are actually on the side of the road. There is um, no electricity, so we have to bring our own. And one of the biggest issues in this desert is telecommunication. Australia is a very western country, but in the end, on 3,000 kilometers of road, there is only 500 kilometers of uh, cell phone coverage. So uh, we need to take our satellite phones, and yeah, we can't really call home from there. Yeah, we're also sleeping in tents, like you can see. So, yeah, the comfort is actually much different. And it's actually very important to know that the pressure rises um, until the, the, yeah, for the race, but the comfort drops. And it's very important to be well prepared. And, yeah, you, there is only so much, do, so much you can do with uh, planning uh, up front. So you actually need a very reliable car. And a very reliable car with a very reliable car, you won't have any problems and you will have a very comfortable race. But in the end, you need to, uh, to, to finish and you want to be, to be victorious. So that's why we actually were very innovative. The biggest problem with innovation is reliability. So we tried to combine both of them. One of the key aspects of an electrical vehicle is its battery pack. We actually um, built a very innovative 3D printed battery pack. And with this technology, we actually um, built the safest and also the, the, the most performant battery pack that was ever seen in the World Solar Challenge. So with this, I want to show you that it's actually possible with a student project to achieve something that maybe is useful in the automotive industry. I'm going to show you now a small video to give you an idea about what it's like to be in this Australian adventure. So normally there should be some sound. <laughs>
Well, some of you may maybe wonder um, why we are doing this. And yeah, actually, we still believe that we are trying to bring the, the future a little bit closer to the present. But what I think is that actually we're trying to build a car, and a car is built to transport humans, but I think this car is more than that. And it's actually made to create and transport ideas. Thank you. <laughs>